Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It's a third uh, micro video lecture on the topic assimilation and uh, the source you see on the screen is uh, a book entitled An Outline of English Fanatics by Daniel Jones. What we are going to discuss today, we are going to discuss assimilation in terms of consonants and vowels. My name is Nehar Afridi and you are watching my YouTube channel Learning English with Afridi. And if you are ready, let's discuss our topic. Consonantal assimilation is of three types. First one to discuss is place of articulation. What is meant by it? It means that two sounds, one at the end of one word and another at the start of another word. These two sounds came to be pronounced from one place. Like one sound, we can simply say that one sound becomes similar to its neighboring sound in terms of place of articulation. Consider these examples for your understanding. That boy. It will become that boy. That boy. Okay, like T, T sound assimilates to P, P sound. Okay, same is the case with that person, that person, like uh, it will become that person. So what happens here, T assimilates to P, like T sound assimilates to P sound. Okay, okay, next example is 10 calls, 10 calls, so it will become ting calls, ting calls. Like uh, what happens here? Mm. Assimilates to ng in this example. And uh, when we are talking about place, so both ng and k, these are wheeler sounds. Okay? Consider the fourth example, which is this sheet, this sheet. But in rapid speech, in casual speech, or in connected speech, it will become this sheet, this sheet. So what happens here is becomes sh. Okay. Second consonantal assimilation is manner of articulation. Like it's very simple. What happens here? We see two sounds. Okay they become similar in terms of manner of articulation. One at the end of a word and another at the start of another word. These two sounds becoming similar in terms of manner of articulation here. Consider these examples. That side, it will become that side, like t becomes s, okay? Another example is good night, but in rapid and quick or connected speech, it will become good night, good night, like d becomes n, right? Third consonantal assimilation is called voicing. And you know what's voicing? It's a kind of activity that is related to the vibration of your vocal cords. Okay, like what happens in voicing when we are talking about assimilation that a sound that is voiceless becomes voiced, okay, and vice versa. Consider the example of l, l, or la, which is voiced sound. But in a word like apply, apply, it becomes what? It becomes voiceless, right? The reason is p sound. Same is the case with n, n, na sound, which is voiced as well. But in a word like snow, it becomes what? It becomes de-voiced. We do see assimilation with wall sounds as well. And uh, it's of two types. Fast, 
they are nasalized like walls are nasalized when followed as well as preceded by nasal sounds so when we see a, a wall sound in between nasal sounds okay so wall is nasalized consider the example of man man so what we see in this example ah is followed as well as preceded by nasal sounds which are Mm. and mm. and second point is walls are longer when they are an open syllable okay and uh, comparatively short when followed by voiced sound and short when followed by voiceless sounds consider these examples for understanding c c okay like E sound is uh, not followed by any word. So that's why it's longer. Its pronunciation is longer. When we're going to compare it with seed, seed. So the same E sound is comparatively longer. It's not that much longer as it was in the first example. Why? Because it is followed by a voiced sound. And... Uh, Third example is seat, seat, where E wall is followed by voiceless sound. So that's why the pronunciation of this wall is short, not that much longer and fully long. And that's it. Okay, dear friends, take good care of yourself. Stay safe and healthy. And uh, if you consider my channel worth subscribing, Please do subscribe it. Bye-bye.